to game at 8K resolution. One GTX Titan, two GTX Titans, an entire armload of GTX Titans on this, the 12th installment of holy shit. We're gonna find out if I drop all these Titans. Ooh, no, I won't. Cooler Master's Mastercase Maker 5 features their freeform modular system allowing you to customize, adjust, and upgrade. Make it yours at the link in the video description. Okay, so first things first, the answer is not any of these things because these are all old Titan X's. They're like gross and ancient and like, I mean, look at this, this is an original Titan. Blah. No, the answer is going to be NVIDIA's latest flagship Titan XPs based on the Pascal architecture. Now, I've heard of people jury rigging them to run more than two at a time, but for the time being, we only have two and that's all that's officially supported and that's all we have SLI bridges for anyhow. So the answer is gonna be two of the latest Titan XPs along with one of their fancy new high bandwidth bridges, which looks a little something like that. That's how you install it, right like that. It's a Nikki V SLI bridge installation tip. Boom. Whoa, I almost dropped that. Sorry, let's put that right there. Did you, get, did you get that catch? Oh, that's a shame. That was awesome. I'm over it now. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need, of course, is an 8K display of some sort. And the astute among you are probably already aware that unless I could get a company to send me some kind of amazing pre-production prototype or something, well, those don't really exist yet. So instead, I'm going to be tackling this in a way that I think will give us the performance results that we're, that we're looking for without having to source a product that straight up isn't available. So this, my friends, is the monitor desk mount. Here we go. Let's get all the pieces out here. Uh, made by Vivo. This is a two by two quad monitor mount that can accept up to four 27 inch monitors. And we will be using four of our 27 inch 4K LG displays that are left over from eight gamers, one CPU. So it's actually this one, only I will need a bunch of them. Okay, well, I've never done one of these before, so consult the manual. Oh my God, this is not gonna be easy to assemble. I get it now. Okay. Okay, so it is fairly obvious from looking at this that I am going to need to make some more room. Oh. Kind of like that. Actually, that's, uh, that does seem like it's gonna work pretty well. Okay. Ah, now it's not going anywhere. Okay, let's get some more monitors. Wow, this is actually pretty fast to mount by the look of things. I thought basically building the multi-monitor stand was gonna be like half the video. So I might have more time to actually use it then. I thought, why did I take them out again? Oh, I didn't. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. Ah! Why does anyone let me near expensive hardware? Not sure. Oops. Uh. Oh, okay. Not bad at all. Okay, where's my test bench? GTX 1080? Please. We are getting that garbage off of here. Okay. This is more like it. Um, when it goes in. What the hell, who bent this? Oops. 
It's fine. It's just a very expensive graphics card, no big deal. Okay, are they beauties or are they beasts? Maybe that was the moral of the story all along. You can be both beauty and beast if you're a $1,200 graphics card. Okay, so our quad monitor, quad 4K monitor, effectively 8K worth of pixels setup is now complete. So the next step is to hook up our test bench. Here we go to the monitors and see if she fires up the first time, which would be a freaking Christmas miracle because nothing ever works the first time, especially when you're working with some kind of bizarro land experimental setup. Our test bench machine, we hope is suitably badass. It's got a Core i7 5960X eight core extreme edition, 128 gigs of Dominator Platinum Corsair memory, an Asus X99 Deluxe two motherboard, a 1600 watt power supply because, you know, YOLO, whatever, right? And even then, I'm still pretty skeptical as to whether it is going to successfully run games at 8K resolution. Oh man, waiting for a computer to post is like, torture and you're not sure if it's gonna work. Oh, I don't know if that's a good sign. This could just sign in anytime now. Hey, hey, there we go. Okay. It keeps kind of bailing on me here. Okay, there we go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, there we go. Oh, for crying out loud. Hey, hey, there we go. No. Are we good this time? No. No, we're not. How long until it isn't funny anymore? Ah, <laughs> it's still funny. That's good, that's good that it's still funny. Oh. Is that it? We good now? Thank you. Jeez. Wow, this is something else. We could have a problem here. It didn't even occur to me for a second that I can't tile the displays in a two by two. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Two by two. Phew, okay. Oh, I was having like a panic attack there. Okay. Okay, it's confused. It's a little confused. It's still figuring out its confusion. It hurt itself in its confusion. Oh, this is terrible. Why is this so hard? Why is it saying 1920 by 1080 is my only, yeah, disable. Yeah, I wanna disable it. Piece of junk. So I think I made a small configuration error. You'll have to forgive me. It's been a very long time since I've set up an NVIDIA surround setup, but it looks like the way it works these days is you don't want to plug all of the displays into the top graphics card and run SLI. It looks like you actually split up which graphics card the displays are plugged into. So hopefully that is going to fix this for me and I will not continue to have trouble here. And that means that I can run all of them on DisplayPort. In theory, these are HDMI 2.0 compliant, both of them. But uh, in practice, I was not able to run at 4K 60 Hertz on one of my displays. So not sure exactly what any of this means yet, but stay tuned. It is not even letting me click on the NVIDIA control and it crashed. Nope, never mind, it's back. And it crashed. And it's back. Okay, span with surround. Oh, come on, okay. Configure. That looks right. Wait, what? No. That looks right. 7680 by 4320. 60 Hertz. Come on, be oh, I got it wrong. Oh, shoot. Might be easier to just swap the cables on these ones at this point. Come on, baby. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so the NVIDIA control panel crashed just trying to create this monster, but there it is, 7680 by 4320, 
And if we pop into our adapter properties, boom, 60 hertz. This is 8K. Yes, this is 8K, my friends. Let's just put the old NVIDIA control panel yeller here as, uh, gotta put her down there. Take her behind the barn. There you go, you're done. So this is a first for me. Let's fire up a game. But can it, my friends, can it run Crisis? Running at 1080p. That's 1080. That's full HD. That's a joke. So this is a common question that people will ask is, do games even support 4K? Well, games are actually coded to support whatever resolutions the system supports. So yes, games support 4K without any additional modifications required in some cases. In the cases of poorly coded games, no, they, they might not support future resolutions. But in theory, Crisis is gonna fire up in a moment here at 8K. Oh, 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 yes, yes. There it is. And for some reason, Afterburner is showing through, but hopefully that will go away when we minimize it. There it is. There it is, my friends. 8K Crisis running at 60 FPS in the menu only, mind you, but here we go. Ah, oh, I could get used to this. Let's see what kind of performance we can get out of two Titan XPs. Crisis 3, very high. And we crushed it. Yes, my friends, 24 FPS. Fully cinematic in Crisis 3. I may need to turn on bezel compensation if I'm going to play for any kind of extended period of time. Okay, I'm also gonna adjust some in-game settings here. What do you think? Is that gonna be playable? Hey, hey, whoa, okay. Medium system spec, we're looking at about 50 FPS. I am liking that. I am not, oh, oh, hold on, run the benchmark. Okay, we're running the benchmark. Benchmarking Crisis 3 at 8K medium settings. It's great, I love this built-in crosshair into my uh, display here. You just aim at the thing you can't see, right? Oh, that's funny, the crosshair's a little to the left. Okay, well, that'll be, that'll be trippy as all hell. Wow, this is a gigantic display. And wow, it looks perfect. Oh yeah, that bezel. Oh yeah, oh, delicious. Having that right in the middle like that. Yeah, just get in my way, perfect. I mean, I'm not saying this is an ideal gaming experience. I'm just, I'm saying we're gaming at 8K, that's all. So if we had like a multi-cable 8K display today, this is how Crisis would run on a couple of Titan XPs. Benchmark's done. Okay, let's find out. 54 FPS average, medium settings, no anti-aliasing. I would make the argument anti-aliasing completely unnecessary. Okay, so Grand Theft Auto, uh, sort of a lesser degree of success here. Uh, it looks like, yeah, GTA 5 was super unhappy about our 8K resolution. Yep, okay. Maybe we'll try some other games. Sure. I can read I can read this one too. Yeah. The town folks were something uh, Monday the 16th yeah. rode about 50 miles to brother Wow. Brother, yeah. Brother Bam County. Something something circuit weed. Something is at night I had some spending Wherever shall call upon the name of the something saved, probably the Lord. Yeah, you really gotta move your head. All right, let's run the benchmark. I gotta say, this does look like, look at the hair. Unbelievable. This truly is the future of gaming. 8K gaming, friends. 8K gaming. So do we not have an 8K monitor? Uh, no one has an 8K monitor. What about that television we have? Uh, that's not 8K, that's 4K. We, Each have, we of, have nothing that's 8K. No one has anything that's 8K. Unless, that's not true. Yes, it we is. We saw a bunch of them at 
NAB. Well, yes, but that's you not. You said no one. Those aren't commercial <laughs> products. You said no one has. You're it. killing me here. You said no one. Okay. I take things very literally. <laughs> yes, you do. 20.09 frames per second at medium settings in the Tomb Raider benchmark. That's not great. Well, no. But we'll Counter Strike Global Offensive Run. Is, is Ed still here? We should get him to play. Oh my god, the, the console looks ridiculous. Yeah, that is really hard. Valve's high DPI scaling is terrible. Like, it's so inconsistent. Oh I mean, my crosshair! <laughs> the crosshair is the, is the butthole in the middle there. Uh, I got one. Uh, I don't know. The frame rate counter is not that accurate. Actually, you know what? It seems to be uh, it seems to be settling in a little bit, though. It, and it's saying 60 or 70, but it doesn't feel like it. It was dipping more before. And this is interesting. So the bottom two are running off one GPU, and the top two are running off another GPU, and there are slight differences in like the, uh, the response time. So you'll actually see some like a slight jello effect sometimes. And that probably could be perceived. Are you trying to snipe with that? Got wow, that. I can't believe that just worked. So we ran Crisis 3 at medium, Tomb Raider at medium, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive on high, and we're getting about, yeah, it says like 65 frames per second now that it's settled in a little bit, but it really doesn't feel that smooth. So uh, there you have it. Are we ready for 8K gaming? Well, based on that, we don't have the displays that can do it without a gigantic bezel in the middle. And based on that, we don't have graphics cards that don't cost less than 2,400 US dollars running an SLI in order to even have a chance of playing games. I would say the answer is no. But is this a unique and unreal experience, Ed? It's making me sick. It's making you sick. It is so cool, he's sick. You know what else makes me sick? Phone trees. Yes, my friends, when you call a company and you spend 20 minutes actually navigating through to the right person who ends up not being the right person anyway. And Ting hates them too, which is why when you're on Ting, the mobile carrier that puts customer satisfaction first, and you pick up a phone and call them, you actually talk to a real live person. No robots whatsoever. They're not available in Canada, unfortunately, but I tried it out just for lols, and I was like, I knew it was gonna happen, and I was still amazed. Someone's like, hello, this is Ting, what can I do for you? It scared me. You know what else is scary? The fact that Ting does not have huge bundle packages that they sell to you for like 100 bucks a month. You pay only for what you use, and you don't have to try and look into your crystal ball and kind of go, yeah, I might need an extra 500 gigs of data that month. I guess I better buy like a bigger, more upgraded package. Nope, the average Ting bill is just 23 bucks a month per device, and they'll even help you out if you are stuck in a contract covering up to 25%, up to $75 of your cancellation fee. They actually are now lowering mobile data rates across the board too, with data now at just $10 per gig beyond the first gig. So if all that sounds like kind of cool, but you're not sure if you're actually going to save any money, all you got to do is head over to linus.ting.com. We've got that linked in the video description to try out their savings calculator. When you sign up at our link, you'll also get 25 bucks in service credit or towards a new device. So again, that's linus.ting.com. So thanks for checking out this video, guys. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button. But if you like it, hit that like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider checking out the products we featured today, your Titan XPs, your Test Bench, your LG 4K 27-inch monitors, at our link to Amazon in the video description. Also linked in the video description is our merch store, where you can buy cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so maybe check out our last episode of Holy sh where we checked out a $40,000 computer that still couldn't game at 8K.